Liberal Fox News host Jessica Tarlov yet again smacked down a panel of her MAGA co-hosts with a series of brutal fact checks about the 2024 election, the American economy, Vice President Harris, and Donald Trump. And I'm here for it, and I know you are too. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to talk about in this video from the most recent episode of The Five, which is my understanding uh, is the highest rated show on the Fox Propaganda Network. And I like to imagine that at least part of it has to do with Jessica Tarlov. As you know, here at Pondering Politics, we are the unofficial Jessica Tarlov fan club because I think she has the hardest job in mainstream media. We're going to play several clips from the most recent episode of The Five. And in this first clip, um, Jessica points out the double standard that Republicans and Fox News and basically everybody on the right and sometimes even on the center, you know, the so-called mainstream media, the double standards they impose on the vice president compared to Donald Trump with respect to policy. And in terms of the standard, you know, holding her to her old policies and maybe this backfires on her in some ways. The most accurate representation of what kind of policies Kamala Harris supports are the ones that came out of the Biden-Harris administration. And she's going to have to live with that. If that's not good for inflation, that's one thing. If it's trending in her direction, which I believe that it is, maybe it ends up better. But Donald Trump has been, for instance, saying that he's going to introduce a big, beautiful health care plan. And there are no specifics on it. And Kamala is being held to a standard where she has to tell you the nuts and bolts of things where people are saying, you tell us exactly that. She's supposed to talk about her economic plan on Friday. The press is already saying it'll be, quote, light on detail. They don't know. Could it be as light as big and beautiful? Are you, I doubt it. Are you? So this is a really, really good point that was actually recently raised by Republican strategist and never Trumper Tim Miller in his recent debate with MAGA Republican Fox News host Tommy Lauren, which is. You know, MAGA Republicans lie openly when they claim that Donald Trump is good on policy and that he understands policy. He's not. And he's never been able to substantively address questions about foreign or domestic policy. So when he says, I have a big, beautiful health care plan, they're like, wow, what great policy, what vivid details. And then in contrast, if Vice President Harris, you know, alludes to, you know, this idea like we're going to expand the ACA. Well, how are you going to do that? I want a 75 page PowerPoint presentation. And I demand it in 72 speeches in 50 locations across the United States. It's absolutely preposterous. And so what Jessica's talking about is, again, this asymmetry because they understand deep down that Trump can't compete, certainly on policy outcomes, but perhaps even more importantly, on being able to talk about policy substantively. So, again, they grade him on a curve and try to impose that higher standard on the vice president. And I think she's right to resist it for as long as possible. Another clip from the same episode. Jessica, and, and they uh, rewrite Trump's pledge to eliminate taxes on tips as, quote, <laughs> Kamala Harris's tax proposal. And they go on to say that the majority of uh, Republicans endorse her tax proposal. Yeah. So I mean, the, isn't that a bit much? <laughs> well, the thing with the no tax on tips policy, which the uh, Democratic senators have endorsed, and it is has bipartisan popularity, but there is a distinction between the, the way the Democrats would do it and the way that Trump would do it. So the way the Kamala Harris plan would work is there would be an income limit, because right now there's a loophole in Trump's approach, would, which would allow people like corporate lawyers, for instance, to take advantage of it, or people who work at hedge funds. So they want to make sure that it's actually for people who are earning low wages. And I should note that the Culinary Union came out and endorsed Kamala Harris. Donald Trump went on this whole thing, like, I'm so good for the servers. And he did this in Las Vegas. Like, they talked to a woman who said, you know, I'm, my, ta my tips are getting taxed. And the Culinary but, but, Union but it, didn't care and endorsed Kamala, who they believe will be better for her. But it was not her tax proposal. In it, fact, two years ago, she, she took, voted to strengthen the IRS. I, so I'm saying it, there's bipartisan it. support for no, her. No, we're the way talking that she's about doing, Kamala, not right, bipartisan. She is, well, but she's part of bipartisan, which is why Jackie Rosen is also in support of it. Mm. Can I say also about the no press conference? So, again, and then it transitions into the first clip I showed you. So Jeanine Pirro doesn't like this. She, she and so many MAGA Republicans think that Donald Trump somehow copyrighted or trademarked this idea of not taxing tips. Well, he didn't. You can't. And the vice president is shrewdly capitalizing on it. If the position was reversed, they'd be praising Trump for his Machiavellian politics. And the difference is. As Jessica points out, there's a substantive difference which improves on Trump's initial proposal of no tax for tips. Democrats, of course, take this idea and actually make it better, as is always the case compared to Republicans, a substantive policy difference which enjoys bipartisan support. Janine Pirro doesn't like that. She also lies and says, well, 
you know, uh, the vice president a couple of years ago voted to increase uh, the IRS's budget and its manpower. So clearly she supports taxing tips. That's ridiculous. Number one, there's no relationship between these two things. Number two, uh, that happened two years ago. So let's say they are somehow mutually exclusive. This idea that the vice president can't have changed a position in two years is ridiculous when Janine Pirro supports a guy who changes his position every two hours, right? Again, that's where they constantly grade Trump on a curve. Jessica has a right to reject it out of hand. I would probably be more ruthless and condescending and pointing that out, but whatever. She's very effective at what she does. The third thing is, The IRS expansion was to target multimillionaire and multibillionaire tax cheats, not waitresses and waiters. That was a lie spread by Republicans baselessly. The fact of the matter is the whole point was that the IRS, because it's understaffed, because it's underfunded, uh, it's very difficult for them to dedicate the manpower and hours needed to go after very powerful, very wealthy tax cheats. And so they go for the low-hanging fruit instead. So Janine Pirro is wrong. This proposal would actually shift the focus on the greater targets, the millionaires, multimillionaires, billionaires, and multibillionaires. So she was just categorically false on that front. I'm going to play another clip here, and it goes in terms of Donald Trump's recent campaign rhetoric uh, and also dovetails into recent economic news. Uh, that will affect the election if the current trajectory maintains. <laughs> no, you're done. <laughs> no, but you, I, I, you, 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 I mean, it's more of what you expect from Donald Trump if you're on the other side, I would assume. Yes, yeah. it is more. And he's definitely back to the fighter mode, though, I would say, having been at the RNC, that, you know, yeah. he threw those zingers out there too. He said crazy Nancy Pelosi. He, he went for it. He he didn't slow down that much. But yes, this is Donald Trump in campaign mode. And that's what Democrats want to see. Mm-hmm. They want to see someone who is up there and is going to be bragging about crowd size and saying that he had a bigger crowd than Martin Luther King Jr. So it's not actually the best day, though, for him to be doing this because the inflation report was a good one. So we're under 3% for the first time since March 2021. It's 15 months that we've seen wage growth go over the inflation rate, which is what everyone wants to see. There was a report out that our U.S. Uh, crude oil production is now 13.4 million barrels a day. So we're outpacing 35% ahead of Russia, 38% ahead of Saudi Arabia. And what we're seeing in the surveys about this, like in Michigan, for instance, there was a FT and the Ross School of Business did a poll together of voters there, and they actually rated Kamala Harris as more trustworthy on the economy than Donald Trump. It was just 42 to 41, but she was trailing double digits, sometimes over 20 points behind him. So the American public is seeing a change here. They are seeing inflation cool. It's not done. 100% it's not done. But it is moving in the right direction, and that's why you're seeing such a surge for Kamala. Mm, I don't know if we're seeing a Fantastic point, of course. Uh, Greg Gutfeld says, I don't know if the surge is real or if it's manufactured, of course, because they're struggling to cope with the fact that as of this moment, Donald Trump is losing the election. But again, great points all the way around by Jessica Tarlov. The uh, inflation report as of recording was yesterday. Uh, Fox did not handle it well. We might do a video about that. They were very sad to see inflation down so much because they fear it portends positive economic news and sentiments for the Biden-Harris administration and therefore the Harris campaign, and they'd rather see people suffer than Democrats win politically. But yes, of course, when it comes to economic records, as we've talked about, uh, Donald Trump has a terrible economic record. Now, he is advantaged usually with respect to perception because he's a Republican and he's a businessman and the American people regrettably tend to associate that, well, he must be financially brilliant and they tend to look back on his four years with nostalgia. But as a reminder, Donald Trump inherited a very recovering economy, a, a an economy firing on all cylinders, recovering from the Great Recession that was triggered by the Bush administration or under the Bush administration. Barack Obama came in. It took him two years to dig us out of a Republican-created mess, um, and the economy was firing on all cylinders. Uh, President Obama handed it off to Donald Trump. Those economic trends continued for the most part. Actually, job growth slowed under Trump compared to Obama, but hey, you know, so basically I use the, the skyscraper metaphor, right? George W. Bush left Barack Obama a gaping pit in the ground. And in the course of two presidential terms, Barack Obama created a skyscraper that was still under construction, a hundred stories developed. And then he passed the project on to Trump. Trump added a couple more stories at the same rate. And then in his fourth year, the whole thing collapsed and left another gaping hole. That happened under Trump. 
And then President Biden came into office and had to basically do what Barack Obama did, but he did it in one term. And now the question is, who do we hand off this economy to? Do we hand it off to President Biden's second in command, Vice President Harris, who was part of the Biden-Harris administration and therefore can lay claim to the economic recovery, the miraculous, unexpected uh, economic recovery that we've seen post-COVID that many people, many conservatives not only didn't expect, but were actively rooting against because, again, they didn't want Biden to be rewarded for it politically? Or do we hand it off to Donald Trump, a Republican president, knowing that 10 out of the last 11 recessions began under Republican presidents, that modern economic history has been Republicans triggering economic catastrophes and Democrats coming into cleaning up the mess. Uh, And we actually have proof in the pudding with Donald Trump specifically, because in his fourth year in office, the economy collapsed on his watch. Seems to me that rationally speaking, we would better be we'd be better suited to trust Vice President Harris with the economy. And that is why, as as, uh, Jessica Tarlov alludes to that recent Financial Times poll of swing state voters, which we talked about in a previous video, that shows for the first time a Democratic candidate, Vice President Harris, actually leading the Republican candidate by one percentage point. So it's within the margin of error on who would be better trusted with the economy. Who uh, do you trust better? Who uh, has a better economic vision? Now, this is an outlier, right? It's entirely possible that, you know, the next Financial Times poll will show Trump back in the lead, but this is a reputable pollster. And so if nothing else, it means that even on this issue, Trump is vulnerable. And so Vice President Harris should indeed pursue her advantage. And then, of course, the last thing I'll just say is under the Biden-Harris administration, macroeconomic metrics have been better than they were under the Trump administration. More jobs created, even if you control for COVID, lower unemployment, lower unemployment for various cohorts. Uh, GDP growth has been much higher. Small business startups have been much higher. Manufacturing, uh, 800,000 manufacturing jobs brought back to the United States when there was a net loss under Trump. Uh, deficits have been lowered. There has been less added to the debt, basically on every macroeconomic metric, with the exception of inflation. And that was a global phenomenon. The Biden Harris administration has been better. So hopefully, this is the beginning of a trend which shows that the American public recognizes these gains, understands that there's still more work to be done, but recognizes, well, just objectively speaking, what Biden Harris did with respect to the economy, improving the economy, given the hand that they were dealt. It's just objectively much more impressive than whatever Trump did, and they should therefore be rewarded. Great stuff all the way around. Great performance by Jessica Tarlov. Let me know what you think in the comments.